Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and I'm here with our 1222 low elo tier list. Our regular tier list, which we post with the patch rundown and mid-patch updates, is aimed at around the high gold to platinum skill level. This one covers everything below that. Obviously, any tier list is a bit nuanced, but in general, this is a great way to know what champions to pick and which to avoid to instantly give you a better shot at winning your solo queue games. Before we get to the tier list, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your ProGuides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our coaches and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount for you. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it is worth every penny. Now, onto our tier list. As always, we'll start off with our top laners. Wukong moves up to the OP tier. This patch has been really good for him. Most of the meta bruisers are champions he has naturally always done well against, and when you end up against tankier foes, the combo of Sunderer, Blade of the Ruined King, and Cleaver allows you to melt them like butter. On top of his super strong dueling, He's also an incredible team fighter. With no real weaknesses either in lane or later in the game, he's definitely one of the very best champions for climbing right now. Fiora is a champ that typically doesn't do that well in solo queue, and especially not in the lower ranks. But right now, she's so broken that even down here, we're moving her up to the OP tier. The thing is, Fiora's skill ceiling is insanely high, but her skill floor is not that crazy. When she's overtuned, anyone can pick her up and at least deal some good damage. Even if you don't parry anything significant, you'll melt foes, squishies, and tanks alike. In her current broken state, the bare minimum is enough to carry games. Sejuani and Zac are both being moved down to the A tier this patch. There's a lot of hype about tanks being so OP right now, but really, the stats don't back it up. Specifically in the mid and lower ranks, a lot of them are looking about the same or even weaker as with these two. We're moving Camille up to the B tier here. In the middle and upper ranks, Camille is actually just about on par with Fiora when it comes to her strength, but the issue is, Camille's skill floor is pretty high. To have a mediocre impact on the game, you need to already be pretty good at her. So, 9 out of 10 times, the average silver Fiora is going to have way, way more of an impact on how a game goes than the average silver Camille. Remember, the key takeaway from entries like this is that we're talking about the average silver player. With some practice, you can definitely still make a pick like this work, and once you get good enough at her, you'll be able to carry most of your games. Pantheon fell off really hard this patch, so we're moving him all the way down to the C tier. He's still an incredibly strong mid laner, but the champions in the top lane pool are able to either stand up to his early game bullying or outscale him at later points in the game before you can close it out. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Trundle moves up to the S tier. So many of the small shifts that happen this patch are in Trundle's favor. For one, more people are picking tanks and building tanky items on champions that aren't tanks that we've ever seen before, so Trundle is naturally doing well. The new jungle also works in his favor. The companion makes up for his lack of AoE damage, and his passive sustain is a big deal, since junglers overall take a lot more damage in their clears now. On top of that, he's also a good abuser of the buffed up Ravenous Hydra. Anyone that can take advantage of that item is in a pretty good spot right now. Dr. Mundo was just starting to decline in performance a little bit by the end of the season, but both the new jungle and the new tank items are treating him super well. While most people think of Mundo as a tank, remember, he's actually a juggernaut. That means he's as beefy as any standard tank, but does tons of damage and can very easily hard carry games with even a small lead. The one bit of advice I have is to bring Ghost. It helps Mundo go where he pleases much faster. Another champ doing super well in the new jungle is Lilia. Again, she's another champion with a fast clear and built-in sustain, so she has an edge over foes that leave their first clear under half HP. In the lower ranks, there's no doubt about it that she's by far the best AP carry in the role right now. Nocturne is our final champion moving up to the OP tier in the jungle today. While he's technically an assassin, you build him like a bruiser to cover up an assassin's usual weakness of not being able to teamfight very well. The result is a champion that can very easily play for picks as well as jumping into 5v5s to bring down their targets. 
Volibear drops down to the S tier. He's still a more than reliable champion with some of the strongest early game impact of any jungler, while being super easy to pull off. It's just that he's not quite as oppressive as the monsters in the OP tier for this patch. Rammus drops to the S tier. As with Volibear, he's still a very strong, reliable pick that gets consistent results over the course of many games. But what limits him from being in the OP tier is that he absolutely has no ability to 1v9 games. He can constantly make picks, but if all four laners are useless, Rammus just can't do anything to win teamfights on his own. In certain metas, this weakness can sort of be glossed over, depending on who is strong in the jungle. But right now, there are just way too many carries that can put an entire team on their back and win 5v5s on their own. Amumu drops down to the B tier. The sad mummy finally actually has a reason to cry. After being one of the most broken champions in both the jungle and support for most of season 12, Amumu has been hit hard by the preseason changes. The new items are actually pretty good on him, but his issue is clearing the jungle. He heavily relied on the Omnivamp and Drain healing on the previous jungle items to have a healthy clear. He's the one champion that the companions do not work in favor of. The last jungler we'll be looking at is Zac. He's suffering for much the same reason as Amumu, but he's feeling it even worse. Most of Zac's clearing strength came from his ability to apply the jungle item's drain effect by spamming his W. This gave him a quick and healthy clear. But now, he clears much more slowly and does so with significantly less HP, leaving him open to invades and making him much weaker if the enemy jungle shows up to contest Scuttle or to counter one of your ganks. If you can survive the early game and make it to teamfights, he's still really good, but actually getting to that point is way, way harder now. So we'll be moving him down all the way to the C tier. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Tristana moves down to the S tier. If you like to play aggro 24-7 and force fights on your foe whenever you can to try and snowball to a fast victory, Tristana is probably a champ you should pick up. When it comes to aggressive mid laners, most of the other options are melee champions that can't always force trades. If an opponent sits back, they can usually at least safely farm to some degree. But with Triss, you have a much bigger threat range, so you'll find a lot more opportunities to find kills that can get your snowball rolling. Once you get ahead with her, she's a champion that can really take over a game fast. She's basically an assassin in the mid game, able to catch out foes and blow them up quick. She also absolutely melts turrets, so you're able to turn a pick into an extra objective to put your team further and further ahead. All of this adds up to a champion that is super self-sufficient and can easily backpack most games. Ziggs moves up to the S tier. He's basically the polar opposite of our last entry. Where Tristana wants to go in hard every chance she can get, as Ziggs, you just want to neutralize any opponent you're going against by constantly clearing waves. Once you get some levels and AP, you can actually ramp things up and become a bit of a lane bully. The instant wave clear you get towards the later parts of the laning phase allows you to shove your foe under turret and rain down constant poke while they try to farm. If left alone by the enemy jungler, you can very quickly bring down the turret at this point. Outside of lane, you sort of play the same game. You never really want to have direct fights at Ziggs. Focus on staying in areas where you can zone your foes with your minefield and force them to funnel into your bomb spam. To keep yourself safe, it's a good idea to stay near a wall where you can use your satchel charge to jump over to safety. After becoming way too strong right at the end of the season, Fizz has dropped off a bit now that the preseason has hit, so we're moving him down to the A tier. In my opinion, this is exactly where Assassin should be to be considered healthy. When an Assassin is in the S or OP tiers, it means they're getting fed way too consistently, and that class is supposed to be Feast or Famine. If they're feasting every game, then their squishy targets are left with no counterplay and the game just isn't fair or fun. Now let's move things down to the bottom lane. Overall, the preseason hasn't been too kind to Miss Fortune. In the higher ranks, she's fallen off pretty hard, landing somewhere between the A and B tiers, but her strong laning phase and easy to use kit makes her always at least pretty good in the lower ranks, so we're moving her down one notch to the S tier for this list. Since the start of the preseason, Samira has been doing a lot better than usual in the lower ranks, so we'll be moving her up to the S tier. Samira's strength is just overall good right now, but she's especially strong if you play her with a duo that can match your aggressive playstyle. You'll always prefer to lane with a support that can engage, or at least an aggressive caster like Nami. Kog'Maw has seen a little dip since the start of the preseason, so we'll be moving him down to the A tier. This is a bit surprising. Since so many people are forcing tankier builds on champions in all roles, we kinda thought Kog would actually be doing better. To finish things off, we've got our supports. 
we'll be moving Nami up to the OP tier. Typically, most people think of Enchanters as low pressure in lane, scaling picks that shine in teamfights, but Nami bullies lane to the point that she's almost on par with mage supports in that category. So, if you like Enchanters, but want to have some presence early on, she's a pick you definitely need to include in your pool. All that early game power does mean she doesn't scale quite as well as some of the other Enchanters like Sona and Janna, but the trade-off is pretty worth it if you can help snowball a carry and generate an early lead. We'll be moving Leona down to the S tier. If you look at Leona's overall win rate, this seems like we're placing her way too high. But as we've touched on in the past, Leona's stats get tanked heavily by people building Solari on her. When you go even shroud, her win rate goes way up. So that's what we're basing her placement off of. Leona's biggest strength is how hard you can snowball with an aggressive AD carry. Picking up just a single kill in lane is usually enough to get the ball rolling, since once you have your ultimate, you can engage again and again with its low cooldown. Amumu also drops down to the S tier. If you enjoy playing him, don't let this discourage you one little bit. Being in the S tier means he's still really strong, and when it comes to team fighting, Amumu is unmatched, especially for locking down foes and setting up your allies to get a clean sweep. Zack has seen a sudden drop off in performance, so we're moving him down to the B tier. He's not the worst thing you can pick, but you can definitely do better. There's really not a game where Amumu, Leona, or Rel wouldn't be better. And that about wraps things up for our 1222 low elo tier list. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Since making this list involves going over all the champions in all the roles, I'm sure we overlooked a pick here or there. So feel free to let us know if you think we missed something down in the comment section below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the Rift and may the LP gods smile down upon you.